Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. Today, I am incredibly excited because we get to kick off a brand new video series together. That's right, in these tutorial video series, what we like to do sometimes is to create kind of a bigger demo and then walk through all of the steps that we did to lead up to and create that final demo. And that's what we're gonna do here today. Starting with this very, very first video, we are gonna go through the process of eventually being able to get to build this. Now, this is a hex tile grid that is automatically laid out for us. It has a GUI so that we can increase the grid size if we want to. We can rebuild it and it can go all, you know up pretty high. We can get a pretty big hex tile size there. We'll just leave it at two for now. And then it's got this really cool shimmery effect on the surface and a question mark that's shimmering a little bit differently, kind of inviting us to click on it. And when we do click on any one of these hex tiles, we have a 50-50 chance of generating and displaying a procedurally generated island. That's right, how piratey and cool is that? So I can go click on any tile and again, have a 50-50 chance of generating procedurally generated islands. I hope you are as excited as I am because this is just plain awesome. So where do we start? Well, we always start right at the very, very beginning. So we're actually not gonna start with Babylon. We're gonna go start with Blender. And I'm gonna show you what it is that I created and then go through the process of bringing that into our scene. What I have here is a very, very simple hex tile. This hex tile is composed of four different meshes. I've got a border. I've got three different surfaces that are sandwiched. So on the very top, I have top. Then on the bottom, I have, you guessed it, bottom. And then in between the top and the bottom, I have terrain. Now, the only other thing you need to know about this is let me display the face orientation. The blue means that I'm looking at the outside shell, not the inside face, but the outside face. And the top, the top part of the sandwich, the normals are facing up. And if I turn that off, I'll be looking at the bottom side of the terrain because both the bottom and the terrain layers of our sandwich, their normals are facing down. So that's just something you're gonna to want to know if you go and try and recreate this yourself. Uh, then the last thing that we wanna know here is that I have this uh, fun little press uh, animation that actually flips the uh, hex tile here. I'll turn off the face orientation. Uh, and so again, we can just kind of like see that it, it pops down a little bit and then kind of pops up. Uh, and that's the, that's the animation. That's the hex tile. Now what I'm doing out of Blender is going and exporting as a GLTF slash GLB. If you're not familiar with it, GLTF is like the JPEG of 3D objects. It's one of the most widely used 3D object file formats across the web and definitely one of the preferred ones for, uh, for working in Babylon. So I've exported this uh, right out of Blender as a GLTF slash GLB file. And I'm going to go in and let's start here at the very, very beginning. Now, if you haven't already had a chance to do so, you may wanna check out the video series that I did on creating a pirate fort. In that video series, I created a pirate fort asset, loaded in cannons, cloned those cannons, and then managed the process of copying animation data and applying them to those specific cannons. It was a bit of a process, we got through it, but it was a bit of a process of needing to manage that because in Babylon, animation data and meshes exist separate from one another. They, are, they have no real knowledge of one another. Of course, the animation can play things that happen to the mesh, but the mesh doesn't really know, hey, I have an animation attached to me. That doesn't exist in Babylon. So we had to manage that ourselves. Well, today we're gonna do something a little bit differently. We're gonna reduce or eliminate the need to manage that by using asset containers. Now an asset container is another way that you can load things into Babylon, but it has some awesome features that help us out and save us quite a bit of time and that management of code ourselves to copy the animation. If you wanna learn more about asset containers, down in the description down below, you can find access to this page, which is all about asset containers and then loading from an asset container. You can also find a link down in the description down below to the Pirate Fort video series as well. So where are we starting? Well, it's a pretty basic Babylon playground scene. I've got a camera, an arc rotate camera that has a lower radius limit so I can't get too close to a hex tile. 
Uh, and then I'm of course getting control of that camera. So when I click on the canvas, I can rotate the camera around. I create a light and then I give it a little bit, uh, lower the intensity of that light just a little bit. And here is where we start getting into asset containers. Now, actually one more thing, notice that in my playground, I am using async and await. Those are tools that you can use to tell your code don't go any further than this. Because in Babylon, we have a lot of intelligence that says, hey, you know what, go load this and I'm gonna continue on working through my code as this loads in this asynchronous manner. But what we're going, sorry, in this synchronous manner, what we're gonna do is I want to make sure that I say, don't continue, don't run any more code until this await has actually resolved. And so in this case, I'm, creating a variable called hex tile import. I'm saying await, meaning let this part finish first before you continue. I'm gonna use the Babylon scene loader and load an asset container async from our meshes library, our Babylon JS meshes library, hextile.glb. Okay, now if I hit play, you'll notice that I'm loading this asset, but it's not visible. And that's because asset containers are a little bit different than loading, say, a mesh by itself. What an asset, what a, a, an asset container does is it loads into the program, but it is waiting for you to create a copy of that data and then put it into the scene. And the word that we use for that is instantiation. We use, we take a copy, the original, and we're going to clone everything in it, including the animation groups. And then there's a bunch of intelligence that says, hey, well, if I'm gonna clone this object, the new animation group that's cloned should also point to the new clone. So it takes care of that for us. And the way that we do that is very, very simple. I now have this variable called hex tile import. So what I'm going to do is say hex tile import dot instantiate models to scene. And when I hit play, boom, we now have them added into the scene. Now I added this blue border uh, to, the, to the, or blue color to the border of the hex tile. Uh, and so we can actually go see that I have uh, clones of all of the meshes as well as animation groups. And this is the part that is an awesome thing to save us time from what we did in the Pirate Fort series. I can take this uh, hex tile animation group, open it up, look at one of these targeted animations and say, guess what? The target is already set to clone of hex tile. So I didn't have to do that manage uh, management myself. The instantiation of the uh, original asset container and the meshes within it, that's what did it for us. How awesome is that? Saving more time. It's just another example of how Babylon has built in helpers to make it that much easier for us. And then the last thing that we're gonna go over today is I'm going to set the groundwork for interaction with this scene. Very, very simple, but basically what I have here is the on pointer down, I'm gonna run a function that passes in a pointer event, and then I'm going to get the pick result. If the pick result was a picked mesh, meaning if the cursor clicked and hit a mesh, then I'm going to just simply throw up an alert that says you picked a hex tile. So let's hit play and see this in action. Nothing super exciting, boom, there we go. We have a hex tile. And that basically is it for video number one. We are now set up for success for what's to come. I hope this has been helpful and informative. I hope you're excited to come along this journey for me as we create this big hex tile procedural island grid. It's super, super fun. And there's a lot that we're gonna learn along the way, including diving pretty deep into the node material editor, create some of those awesome shaders. I hope this has been helpful and that you've learned something about asset containers and how you can use them to intelligently copy and clone instantiate stuff into the scene. And if you haven't already had a chance to do so, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any of the future updates that we put out. We put out videos once a week on this channel or we strive to and uh, make sure you don't miss any out on any of those. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.